the lead up to the 2018 general elections, one of the biggest parties in the running is the Social Democratic Liberal Party, otherwise known as SODELPA. Tonight we speak with the leader of SODELPA, Mr. Sitiveni Rambuka. Sir, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome to For the Record. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Fiji. So we'll start off with something that's been on a lot of people's minds. Uh, after maintaining a relatively low profile for the past few years, what made you re-enter the political arena? I answered a call. The call was from the party president uh, when they realized that uh, it was time to prepare for the next election uh, and uh, they had not uh, gone through a provision of the party constitution and that was to select the party leader to prepare the party for the next general election in the case of the uh, incumbent or former party leader not winning the elections. Mm -hmm. uh, in which case the former player party leader or the previous party leader would have become prime minister. In the case where that party leader uh, does not or did not uh, win the elections, they should have uh, relinquished the role of party leader. And well, how is... Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, continue, sir. And uh, because of that, they asked me if I would be available. I said I'd rather not be available. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but my uh, prayer party president being my paramount chief also, I had to send to send attention and say, yes, sir. And mm -hmm. put up my name, sent in my application, went through the uh, selection process and got mm -hmm. selected. And how has your experience been uh, this time around? This time around coming in, uh, it is uh, uh, new because in my previous role as a party leader of SBT, I was instrumental in the formation of the party, the establishment of the uh, principles and values and the vision and mission. Uh, in, this, in this case, I have come in uh, to play according to what is already on the ground. And that was the, uh, the values established by the founding uh, fathers of the party who formed it in 2013. Although I was one of the 5,000 that uh, had to sign the uh, registration form, mm -hmm. I was not directly involved in the formulation of the policies of the party. And, and following from what you said, you're now leading Sodelpa uh, into these elections with the hope of becoming the next Prime Minister of Fiji. What would you say is your opinion of Fiji's progress? Are we progressing as a nation in terms of uh, uh, economic and human development in Fiji? We are, we are progressing. It would be uh, unrealistic to, uh, to say that uh, this government has not uh, progressed, it, uh, progressed it from where the previous government left it. But that is the natural thing for us to be doing. Uh, we know that we're all operating uh, as part of the global community. We're part of the, uh, uh, the global community committed to achieving or contributing towards the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, and we see that uh, uh, happening. So everybody has got to try and improve on the social facilities and the economic facilities and, uh, and so on, uh, as uh, achieved by your predecessors. Well, the uh, Reserve Bank's uh, September review has stated that Fiji is well on its way to uh, continue on this particular track, uh, being the ninth year of consecutive growth in the country. Um, are there any current government policies that you agree with? I agree with most of the policies that are, are now going on. We would like to just offer a difference that will be more a, uh, uh, a consultative process will be uh, the, uh, the main strength or the main difference that we will introduce. Uh, our, our main theme as a party is to provide the nation with leadership that listens. There will be more consultations. Although we see a lot of uh, road shows and uh, consultation with communities uh, being carried out by the Fiji First Government, we would like it to be freer where the provincial councils uh, pick their own chairman, where the uh, village uh, at uh, Turangi Koro is picked by the village and has a good working relationship with the Turangi Avusa. I'm looking at uh, Fijian affairs, or Tokyo affairs in, at the moment. And uh, when it came to uh, changes in regulations that affect the Tokyo people in particular, there should be more of the uh, consultation in that area. So um, that, of course, implies that there's not enough consultation, there's not enough, uh, I guess, transparency at the moment? Uh, maybe they believe uh, there is. I do not think there is. Mm -hmm. I, I've been out of government. I'm not in the uh, 
uh, provincial council, I'm not in the village council, I'm not uh, uh, a, an urban member of the Tikina council as I used to be. So I'm away from all those uh, consultations. Uh, and uh, when I uh, interact with the people in the rural area, particularly my own village, I feel that uh, there's, been, there's not been enough of that mm -hmm. going on. Uh, those agents appointed, uh, selected by government, are the ones that uh, uh, interact with government. Whether they present the views of the communities or not, I'm not sure. Um, have you received, uh, I don't think I should say complaints, so, uh, ha or have these issues been raised by people who are already in, uh, in those settings? Uh, not official, I don't think, uh, where they would have uh, had to take their uh, grievances up through the official channels. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, it's uh, it's a uh, very uh, un it's okay like to uh, complain against your chief. So uh, you would bear it, and hopefully the chief will allow you to have a one-on-one -on -one with him. Uh, mm -hmm. How are things going on, Komai? Uh, Ratu, I believe. Uh, the people are not so happy in this area. And, uh, well, it's safe to say that Sodelpa will be the main rival to Fiji First come this year's elections. Uh, what sets Sodelpa apart from Fiji First? Sorry? What sets Sodelpa apart from Fiji First? Uh, particularly that. We would like to offer Fiji leadership that listens, uh, compassionate leadership, and uh, doing what is right with malice towards none. There's mm -hmm. been a lot of talk in the, in the papers. We even see uh, counter malice being displayed. You know, last week we saw uh, some uh, uh, people uh, defacing uh, a, a billboard. Right. Uh, that is unbecoming of people who, uh, who aspire to elect or select national leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's up to us uh, who are in the running for that to uh, convey the message to the people. Let us show ourselves to be a responsible nation of responsible citizens where we can uh, uh, differ without rancor we can discuss things on the table uh, and around the, the uh, grog bowl mm -hmm. or around the village uh, village hall. On the same note, uh, what would you have to say about Fiji's current political climate? Is it a safe environment for people to campaign for, for anyone who wants to get into government? Is it a good, transparent environment? It is one that uh, challenges the uh, opposition politicians and parties to be very careful. I would rather that people called me up and say, hey, you said this yesterday. Please don't do that. Okay, sorry. Rather than worrying about the first uh, notice of your uh, misdemeanor or saying something wrong was the police coming in to investigate or FICA coming in to investigate. So that implies that there is an atmosphere of fear, I guess. A fear on the one side <laughs> and uh, uh, vindictiveness on the part of government vindictiveness so that implies of course that anyone who goes against government is susceptible to legal challenges against them I believe so and uh, I have uh, I have come across three instances I'm in court right now and I don't and I'm not allowed to say anything about that but there have been two uh, previous uh, occasions uh, where I didn't go as far as being charged mm -hmm. uh, one was uh, when I was charged and went through the whole process very very expensive and I uh, didn't want to go through that again, but I, unfortunately I found myself uh, in the thick of another. And is that something that you're very careful with um, this time around? In yes, I've got to be more careful than most because I am a former uh, law keeper. I'm a former minister responsible for law and order in the country. I am a former uh, leader of the joint uh, disciplinary forces. So I've got to be careful. I've got to be exemplary when it came to that and, uh, and be cautious. Well, of course, uh, some people are still not able to let go of the saga that have happened in the past few decades. But leading up to this year's elections, do you think that that's going to be holding you back or holding Sodelpa back? Uh, it should not. Uh, I think we're now, uh, the bell is gone. Uh, and the Huda will go on the uh, 15th or 14th? 14th. 14th. So before that, two days before that, we'll say uh, stop. And uh, right now, it's a uh, pretty open, open play for everyone. Great. Thank you for those comments.
Well, recently, Mr. Rambuka, you talked about how Sadelpa needs to move away from being an ethel oriented party. You've made statements to uh, that respect. And you've also said that Sadelpa will have to focus on issues, if they, uh, on a variety of issues rather, if they have any chance of forming the next government. Now, do you think that this is a reason why Sadelpa ne didn't necessarily win the 2014 elections? No, I think uh, the 2014, well, part of the reason, but uh, mostly it was people going to the 2014 elections unprepared or not knowing what else. They, uh, as I said, you voted for the first time then uh, and you missed out, I don't know whether you missed out or uh, uh, not qualified by age, what age, whether it was a 21 in 20 uh, and tw tw 2006 or you were under 21 in 2006, whatever it was. There was a bigger group of uh, those that had not really observed two-sided politics in Fiji for a long time. Recently, you've also uh, stated in uh, your uh, previous meeting in the past week that uh, you feel the reason why many Fijians of Indian descent have not been uh, giving their support to Sadelpa is because they still happen to hold a grudge for the coups that you were responsible for in 1987. Yes, I, uh, but I do not believe it is a grudge. I believe they're just unsure of uh, what else is Rambuka like. Mm -hmm. And they seem to uh, focus still on uh, Rambuka of 87 rather than the Rambuka of 97 that gave them a constitution that allowed the uh, indo fijians of Fiji to provide the first indo fijian prime minister. Although uh, a political leader won the election in, uh, in 1997, they didn't quite uh, 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 finish their, their own selection process. In mm -hmm. 1987, it was an Indian, Indo Fijian dominated group uh, that had a, a Fijian face in uh, the, the late Dr. Mbawanda. Uh, so people still see Rambuka of 87. Uh, they have forgotten that uh, the Governor General had to step in in 1977 and that uh, the, uh, the coalition of 1987 had a very smart uh, strategy in having Dr. Mbawanda. Well, you stated. Leader. Sorry, you stated time and time again that uh, you are now a changed man and that you have uh, thought about the mistakes that were made in the past and that moving into this year's election that you will show the new Rambuka. What does that mean? What is the new Rambuka? Who is the new Rambuka? Well, I, I, I feel it's one who is prepared to work across the race barriers, mm -hmm. uh, if there are barriers. I'm prepared to... Uh, to demonstrate what I believe were the founding principles of the Dido session. That's the promotion of civilization and Christianity, uh, to uh, increase industry and trade, and uh, embrace good governance uh, in the interest of the, uh, in, as the, the exact words of uh, the Dido session, uh, in the interest as well of the natives as of the white population. At the time, those were the two factors, uh, factions of the population of Fiji. And how is Sodelpa looking to secure Indo-Fijians' votes uh, this time around? We have had to uh, just rely on uh, those that answered the call. Mm -hmm. We had an allocation of uh, uh, catchment, vote of catchments, that we wanted to reserve for the Indo-Fijian voters uh, who wanted to vote with us. Uh, and uh, we, we tried to fill those. Unfortunately, they, uh, they didn't, uh, not many applied. Mm -hmm. uh, many still uh, have reservations about the party or about the party leadership. Um, we'd definitely like to get into some of the policies, but just before that, I, I, I do agree with you when you say that Sudalpa does need to focus on a wide variety of issues if, if it plans to get into government. But I guess the one thing that a lot of people will be thinking, especially Fijians of Indian descent, um, are you doing this because you genuinely believe that, or rather, are you doing this because you genuinely believe in the rights of other ethnic minorities, or this close to the election, there's obvious skepticism that you might be doing this just to get votes? Yes. Uh, not many people know that I spoke. The uh, general, the Indian Army commander, called me after the coup in 1987. And he said to me, Steve, uh, what are you going to do with our people? I said, General, they're no longer your people. They are our people. I look after them. He was my chief instructor in Staff College in 1979. He became Indian Army, commander of the Indian Army, General Rodriguez. He's now retired. And a group of uh, 
senators and congressmen from the United States hired a, uh, a, a private jet and flew out. They just pray with me the night, uh, one night, and I hosted them in the VIP quarters at the time. They wanted to know how the Indians in Fiji would fare. Mm -hmm. The world at that time was still focusing on, on what Idi Amin had done in Uganda, and everybody worried. And I told them, look, I give you my word, I will look after them. Well, looking within Sodelpa and the candidates that have been, uh, the candidate's name rather, that have been released, there doesn't seem to be much of uh, Indo-Fijians who are going to be taking part in the elections this year for Sodelpa. Why is that? Well, we had eight, uh, uh, eight people applied mm -hmm. and uh, three uh, have withdrawn. So uh, we have five running with us. Five out of 51. Yeah, it's, uh, I was not happy with that. Uh, but that's the. Uh, would you have liked to have more Indo Fijian candidates? Yes. We would have uh, preferred more to have applied. Application is an indication of our acceptability. Well, along and those do you think that a lot of people, a lot of Indo Fijians, didn't apply in the first place because of the outlook that Sodelpa has? Perhaps, yeah. Are mm -hmm. you looking to change that prejudice in any way? Uh, we can only do it by, by demonstrating, by uh, the way we govern, the way we interact with all. Uh, and our policies, they're welcome to see our policies now, and they are, there's no, uh, there's no uh, race uh, factor in uh, availability of land for development. There's no race factor in poverty mm -hmm. alleviation. There's no f race factor in the promotion of education and health services. So those are pretty universal issues. So you seem to have taken up a very strong position on this. Do your uh, other candidates agree with the position that you've taken? Those that I've, uh, I've spoken to, the whole lot of 51, uh, generally agree. Uh, some of them realize that perhaps they still rely a lot on the rural uh, Itoke votes and uh, they cannot afford to, uh, to be too, too embracing. Uh, but I've, uh, I've made it very clear to them, look, I'm here because I believe we have to embrace the other races. Okay. The, the reason why I'm saying this is because for the past four years, I mean, these are people that you have uh, in your candidate uh, lineup, uh, people like Mr. Nawaikula, who have been in parliament for the past four years, and they've stood up and time and time again, they've tried to push a, uh, can I say, an, uh, an indigenous Fijian nationalist agenda. And that's, that's very clear, isn't it? Um, and these people are still contesting the general elections in your party. Yes. And uh, because we were a very democratic party, we went through the selection process. I could not uh, uh, bar him. I could not block him just because of his own personal views about those uh, national issues. So it's safe to say that Mr. Noikula and, and, and people like him don't generally agree with, with this stance that you've taken? They, they probably don't. And uh, some of them have told me, look, we have to look after our own people. And I said, well, everybody's our own people now. Uh, they don't see eye to eye with me on those. Uh, well, while we are speaking about Mr. Nawaikula, um, after Fiji first named its uh, provisional candidates, the first thing that uh, Mr. Nawaikula did was he posted on his uh, Facebook page uh, saying that there were many that were Itaoke. Now, has he been spoken so to, or is that okay uh, for him to say uh, that? Uh, he, many were not okay? That uh, many are. He, 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 he asked people to look at the number of Itoke that were, that were in Fiji first saying that perhaps there weren't enough. Um, and he went on to call the Itoke members of the Fiji first traitors to the Itoke community. I don't agree with that. I didn't see it. And, uh, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a contributor to his page. Okay. Well, what is the uh, general policy within uh, Sodelpa, seeing as uh, this, this election is obviously going to have a lot of campaigning happening, not just in person, but of course on social media as well. Uh, what's, what policies or what um, methods do you have in place to make sure that no one says anything that's going to ignite any sort of uh, inflammatory comments or any feelings of uh, uh, dislike? Yes, we have a policy. It's been uh, circulated and communicated to each and every one, uh, particularly those who are in Parliament, uh, who were in Parliament and those who are running, uh, to be very careful about those. National leadership uh, cannot afford to be based on, uh, on race lines. Thank you for that.
Welcome back. Mr. Rambuka, in the previous segment, we were talking about uh, Sudelpa's newfound inclusive policy for all ethnicities. But you did say that people like Mr. Noikula did not necessarily agree with your, with your newfound stance on this. Uh, if you do make it to government, won't you be ending up with a group of people within parliament who don't necessarily agree with you? Uh, I can embrace people who differ. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I understand them. For a long time, uh, Mr. Mbutonroka, the late Mr. Mbutonroka, was a thorn in the alliance side. But he, he was there. He, uh, they kept him there until uh, the General Assembly uh, requested that he be, uh, be expelled from the party. And he gladly exited. Uh, but uh, many do not uh, understand or see that when he went out, his message was still good for the alliance. Mm -hmm. Well, before we uh, get to something that I was very interested in uh, later on, just just to follow up on that, Mr. Rambuka, don't you think that this particular situation could give uh, Fijians out there a a sense of maybe disbelief in Sodelpa because it doesn't seem like it has a united front, as in you and other members of uh, the party don't see eye to eye? Well, I, I also uh, agree that that uh, impression uh, can be uh, borne by people. They have that impression about us. Mm -hmm. But uh, even in, uh, in SVT, straight after the first election, 1992, there were uh, factions. There were factions in uh, 1994. In fact, 94 happened because there were factions in SVT. And in 1999, and very, very soon after the 99 uh, general election, a faction came to me and said, you led us to a loss. You have to resign. I resign. Uh, so it's all open. As far as I'm concerned, I expect it. Mm -hmm. I accept it. And if they are strong enough with their votes within the party, I lead. How will this uh, difference in opinion that you have with some of your members um, be reflected in the manifesto? No, the, the manifesto, the main themes of the party, uh, the principles, the founding principles are still there. Mm -hmm. It's about inclusive leadership. It's uh, inclusive policies. Uh, so they themselves, those that are opposing the stance I'm taking or the direction I'm driving the party towards, should look at their own utterances against the background of what the party stands for. And well, given this, given this um, difference in opinion that you have, would you say that you are 100% uh, confident and with all 51 of your candidates? I am confident with all of them, all, the whole lot of 51. Even those who differ? Even those that differ. Uh, my challenge to them is, uh, if you do not agree, find a better leader. Who is a, a better leader of us? We'll bring it back to the manifesto. When can we expect it to be released? We're only over a month away from elections. Yes, we will not release it officially until uh, the close of the nomination and the uh, drawing of the numbers. When we go out, then we will have both the long one and the, the abridged uh, version to uh, take with us. So I'm telling our supporters, not much of a difference from uh, what we had before, mm -hmm. uh, but more uh, emphasis on the inclusiveness of those policies we have. If we, if, we, if we continue the discussion on inclusiveness, because this is, of course, uh, a major issue for Sadalpa leading yes. into the elections, um, yes. what are your thoughts on equal citizenry, everyone being called a Fijian? Do you agree with that? I, uh, I do not believe. In fact, my submission to the Yash Gai Committee, uh, Commission was that we should not force the uh, Fijians of uh, Indian origin to discard that proud uh, uh, name that they have had all this time. Indo-Fijian? Uh, no, F Indian. Indian. We, they should not just discard being so known as Indian. You would say that sharing the name Fijian would not be conducive to a good uh, environment in it, Fiji? It does. It, uh, it, it is conducive. But you know, their true identity, uh, we call ourselves Fijians. Who are you? Well, I'm Fijian, I'm Toke, and uh, these are my values. Doesn't that sort of bring a bit of a confusion because citizenry and ethnicity are two separate things and then using the name uh, Fijian would actually reflect on your citizenry, not necessarily your, uh, your ethnic background. On that, um, Sodelpa, uh, sorry, previous Sodelpa leader, Roti Momokepa, had accepted the name Fijian given to all Fijians. But you still don't agree with that and there's internal struggle within Sodelpa. All right, well, citizen, I see that citizenry and citizenship differ. Mm -hmm. How so? I'm a, 
I'm a Fijian citizen. I used to be a Fiji citizen. We all used to be Fiji citizen. When you, when you, when you change that to Fijian, uh, you are embracing the name that was uh, uh, used for the Toke, mm -hmm. specifically, all this time. And uh, it will take time. It will take one or two generations for us to forget that this name was specifically for the Toke. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my children will eventually, uh, my, my gra grandchildren will eventually not understand. So you're enough. saying that at this point in time, it's not a good idea to share that name? No, let us share it now. Let's get used to it. Okay. Okay. Will you, is that something that we can expect to be changed if you become Prime Minister? No, I don't, I don't want to change that. We have uh, lived with it for how long? Uh, mm -hmm. Since the Constitution came in 2013. Uh, why, why dismantle something that we're getting used to? Right. So you're saying that that's your personal opinion, not the reflection of Sudelpa? That is the, uh, the, the uh, reflection of Sudelpa. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, the Sudelpa constitution says that if someone uh, loses an election, they must step down as party leader. If you don't win, will you step down? I will step down, gladly. And then who would you appoint as a deputy? It's not my, uh, not my court anymore. Uh, that's appointed by the next... Uh, uh, management board meeting. Well, there's talk of uh, Ratu Nengama Lalambalavu right now uh, within certain groups saying that he is being groomed or he would be appointed to become the deputy. Depending he, on how your case goes. Yes, he is a natural uh, choice as the party president. Mm -hmm. uh, so he will uh, naturally take over from, uh, from a subordinate officer of the party mm -hmm. and goes back to the party president until the, the new process of selecting a party leader uh, kicks into place. Did you have a say in uh, Mr. Nenga or rather Ratu Nengama's inclusion into the party? Because not previously uh, you did mention that he would not be uh, featured in, in Sudelpa. Well, I, as my paramount chief, uh, as a paramount chief of my province, I had to uh, defer to his uh, view and he had uh, deliberately decided they was not going to stand and uh, for grooming the future leader of the Kondrove, he uh, called his son to be available. Well, looking at the policies, of course, you said that the uh, manifesto won't be released as yet, but uh, a lot of parties are discussing minimum wage, something that's a bone of contention with mm -hmm. pretty much the ordinary Fijian out there. And even the Fiji First Party believes that a minimum wage for unskilled workers needs to be adjusted. Uh, what is Sodelpa's stance on this? What would uh, Sodelpa be advocating for in terms of minimum wage? We had uh, announced that uh, even before I became uh, party leader, we had advocated a uh, minimum wage of uh, $4 an hour. Uh, I have to be very realistic and objective about that because we have uh, many uh, coconut estates in, in the Conrave, uh, owned privately. Where a lot of uh, people work on the estate, cutting copra and uh, grazing cattle. Mm -hmm. And when uh, they go to the mill, and take the cattle to the slaughter yard in uh, Suva. Uh, the, the costs, the logistics of doing those things uh, make it very, very difficult for the owners of the estates to pay the $4. Mm -hmm. But well, in that case, we can, they can negotiate. Well, the national uh, wage rate for the informal sector is $2.68, and there's also 10 separate industry wage councils with the varying minimum wage rates for the different sectors. That's the current policy. Yes. Yeah. Do you think that this is not enough? Uh, what? The $2? Uh, I no, believe the, Whatever is being the done The framework right now. that's in place yes. right now is, yeah. is uh, to have equitable minimum wage depending on the sector. Correct. And for that, there are, uh, there are various uh, councils, industry wage councils. Yes. Yes, we have those uh, industry wage councils and they, we must respect their views because they are there. From some of them came up from the floor level mm -hmm. to uh, management level and executives and uh, we must respect their views. They have been there, they've held that spade, they've, uh, they are now uh, holding the pen or the operating the keyboard and uh, we must continue to do that. They're part of the industry. Um, are there any Sudelpa supporters perhaps from the business sector who have given you reliable information that a four dollar per hour minimum wage rate is feasible for the nation? We have uh, a lot who have said yes, it can be done. Uh, it will reduce our uh, our profits and profitability. But then, the, if they their, their 
the profits uh, fall, the taxes fall, so everything is still okay. I mean, realistically, no business person wants to less, lessen their own profitability, which obviously means Agreed. that the cost will be eventually passed on to consumers, yeah. right? And um, do you still think that Fiji would be able to sustain something like that? I believe so. I believe also that uh, there are a lot of contributing factors to uh, uh, make it uh, bearable for the minimum wage earners. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other policies that you've not asked about is the uh, basic need for food items that mm -hmm. are being that are attracting a seven a nine percent uh, very added tax. Right. Uh, in during my time, there was no tax or no VAT on those basic need food items. And you'll, you intend to change that if you I become? I intend to change that and remove the VAT from uh, zero rate of VATs again on uh, basic need food items. Just rounding off our discussions on, on minimum wage itself, um, one of your candidates, Mary Semisoni, a prominent business person in Fiji, do all of her employees receive a $4 per hour minimum wage? I do not know. and. Uh, uh, the best person to ask is, would be her, and uh, she has not raised any concerns about uh, our mooting the idea of a four dollar mm -hmm. uh, minimum wage. I personally uh, uh, pay my uh, household staff that comes mm -hmm. from government, but they have to change their rate, mm -hmm. and uh, they're very happy with that. Thank you. Welcome back. Mr. Mbuka, recently Mr. Chalimbamba's actions have been scrutinized. Um, he posted personal information of other voters without their consent and it was later discovered that his information was not fact-checked. Um, how would you say that this has damaged Sodelpa? Uh, I think it has uh, brought out a, uh, a weakness in uh, our own control of the uh, party of workers and volunteers. Uh, I've had to talk to Chalimbamba personally and uh, tell him to be more cautious. Maybe too late, I do not know, de uh, depending on what uh, the supervisor election has done uh, for him personally and for the party. Uh, but we'll just have to be more cautious from now on. What would you say about um, the supervisor of elections decision to uh, take this to court? Do you think that it's vindictive of him to do so? I do not. Well, first of all, I, don't, I didn't think it was a a FICAC matter. I mm -hmm. thought it would be a straightforward criminal matter reported to the police. Okay, that's interesting. And uh, so going ahead into the elections, do you trust Mr. Mbamba to perhaps uh, take a step back while, while Sodelpa campaigns? No, I uh, expect him to continue but to be more cautious. Okay. You don't think that this is going to affect voter confidence in Sodelpa? No, I do not believe so. Uh, I think it's just uh, their understanding and embracing over exuberance on some of our workers uh, and they'll just have to uh, uh, keep their exuberance in check. I guess it does uh, eventually boil down to the internal policies that Sudelpa has, uh, especially in terms of dissemina disseminating information. Yeah. Um, social media really is, um, a, it can be a double-edged sword. You can use it to positively you know, pass out information to your voters, but then you do need internal policies to regulate what your people are saying, right? Yeah. Our, our internal policy on that is very clear. Uh, no one is above the party, and no one should jeopardize the, uh, the uh, chances of the party fighting fairly, and their, their continued uh, uh, employment as uh, volunteers and, uh, and uh, sympathetic workers of the party. Do you have a social media policy? Yes, we have. And it's also in our constitution and in our uh, uh, administrative instructions that people have to be very careful about those. Just Could generally, what, is this, what does this policy look like? It's about uh, just making sure that you do not uh, endanger our chances, jeopardize our chances of uh, remaining a, uh, a recognized and legitimate party mm -hmm. uh, and uh, refrain from uh, mudslinging. Uh, refrain from personal attacks. Uh, I can say that because I suffer a lot from personal attacks. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like. It's, uh, it's difficult. So I tell people who do it, stop, because it hurts others. So when it comes my way, I get hurt. But I, I, I cannot retaliate. Well, what are the repercussions of any Sudalpa member going against the uh, social media policies? They can be uh, uh, 
are not dismembered. They can be uh, expelled from the party. Um, so there seems to be some sort of, uh, I guess, a disconnect between the Sudelpa board and decisions that you would necessarily like to take. Is, th is that true? Well, yeah, it can uh, appear that way. I work under the instruction of the board. I'm a servant of the board. I uh, answer to the commands and orders of the board, and I report to the board. Well, just uh, quickly bringing it back uh, to the social media policy, since uh, Mr. Charlie Bamba quite blatantly did disregard the social media policy of Sodelpa, does that mean that he's also going to face repercussions? I don't think he blatantly did that. I think he, uh, he thought he was doing what was right. Uh, he thought that the, the, uh, the voter roll that we had bought, we had bought an electronic copy of that, paid $1,000 for it, and every political party that wants one uh, can do that. And mm -hmm. in his role and, uh, and in, uh, in the awareness team, he had to notify the people, look, make sure you know the uh, polling station you have to go to. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then he, I don't know how he got that information, he probably looked it up and thought he was doing the right thing. Uh, uh, and uh, when he punched in the names, other names came up. You know, we all, we all know that. When we go to send you an email, and I want to send it to uh, Alipati, and when I part it, type in Alipati, it, it comes on with uh, the name, the, the computer gives me uh, Robert Ali or something like that. Mm -hmm. And if you pr press the uh, print straight away, it, it's totally wrong. Well, the supervisor of elections has, on his part, clarified the, the discrepancies that uh, you had highlighted. Uh, moving on from that, Mr. Nawaikula has also recently said that Sudelpa has a good chance of winning this year's elections because there seems to be a Hindu and Muslim split. Do you think that this is true? I do not see it. I do not see it because I have friends on both sides and they don't appear split. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a uh, very close uh, Muslim friends. I have uh, Muslim Tawales and uh, uh, Hindu Tawales also. So I don't see that. And, uh, and I've always tried to quote the Bible and I've tried to live the Bible when it's where it says, to the pure, everything is pure. Okay. I mean, it, it is interesting because there does seem to be this whole dialogue or this, this climate of fear around Islamization. Would you agree with that? Is that there is uh, that uh, perception. This morning I uh, spoke at the prayer breakfast that was uh, run by uh, a relative of mine. And I quoted the uh, King of Jordan, King Abdullah II, who was uh, one of the main speakers at the prayer breakfast, the last prayer breakfast I went to in uh, 2017, uh, straight after the swearing in of uh, President Trump. and. Uh, but uh, the king had to go back, and his speech was read by the ambassador for, for Jordan to the United States. And he said this, I am Abdullah II. I'm king of Jordan. I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I'm a king because I'm a direct descendant of Abraham through his son Ishmael. Uh, Muslims respect places of worship. They cannot desecrate a Hindu temple, a Christian church, a Jewish synagogue or a Muslim a mosque. Well, those, those who do that must be dealt with as common criminals and traitors. And uh, sorry, and not traitors, uh, criminals and uh, terrorists. So again, we'll, we'll go back to Mr. N uh, Noe Kula's statement. Um, clearly, you don't share the same sentiments, but are there members of Sodelpa who would perhaps agree with him? There are some who agree with him. I uh, am from the Konrovi. No, Ikula is from the Konrovi. He's from the Teo. I'm from Nabato. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that the whole of the Konrovi believes what No, Ikula believes, nor do they all, all believe what I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're free thinkers. I guess oh, what I'm trying to say is that there, there is a problem with that because Mr. No, Ikula has been known to be a very prominent member of, of Sodelpa. Correct. And generally when he says things like that, it's accepted that those, I mean, he's representing the views of Sodelpa. Yes. Yeah. He's just one member, I'm the leader. Okay. Uh, apart from uh, those uh, statements, um, what is Sadelpa's plan going into this year's election and making sure that these instances don't occur again? We can only say uh, 
remind people about what our our directives have uh, gone out saying, uh, and uh, they suffer the consequences, personal consequences of their personal activities and actions, uh, and must be prepared for that. How would you like to comment on the use of uh, religion in the lead up to this election? Because there, there have been uh, certain articles in the papers about political parties going and having pocket meetings, and then there's information coming out that there's anti-Muslim or anti-Hindu sentiment coming out from those parties. Um, what is your comment on that? My only comment is that uh, I am fortunate. I have been the leader of the nation. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the members of the nation belong to Hindu religion, Muslim religion, Christians, or all these denominations. And I have uh, been a commander of the army made up of Hindus, Muslims, and Christians. And uh, so I'm, I've, I've been exposed to that. Uh, as a leader, you embrace everybody. So in essence, there seems to be some sort of a, not necessarily a dissent, but difference of opinion within Sodelpa? Within Sodelpa, yes. Uh, personal opinions. Uh, there are some who uh, openly uh, say those things in, uh, in some of the pocket meetings. I have had to caution some of them uh, because we, I do not want to uh, breed uh, racial or religious animosity. Mm -hmm. You don't foresee this overlapping from personal views into political views for the no. party as a whole? As far as I'm leader of the political party, I do not, uh, I will not allow that to become a, a party issue. Thank you for that. Mr. Rumbuka, looking at statements that you have made in the past, um, there seems to be uh, a lot of talk about how it doesn't seem like it's a feasible uh, idea. By that I mean how you mentioned the debt level that Fiji has right now and how it's not a good idea to have one lender that Fiji owes too much money to, the Chinese. I, uh, I, I maintain that position. Uh, we are a member of the uh, international community. I believe we should uh, uh, spread our uh, sources of uh, of uh, lending mm -hmm. uh, rather than concentrate on one. Uh, fortunately for Greece, a few years ago, they, they borrowed from uh, many sources within the, U the Union, the European Union. And when they found themselves in trouble, the Union came together and uh, put together a uh, bailout package. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have only one, perhaps the uh, advantage is that you could go to others that you have not borrowed from, traditional uh, aid partners of the past that you can go to and they alleviate your debt burden to the one lender, if it is all one lender. Well, recently in uh, one of the uh, papers, there was something that was published about a U.S. Uh, uh, politician who had said that China employs a debt trap uh, policy. Do you think that that's true for Fiji? Uh, not at the moment. I think we are still uh, capable of coming out of our debt. When, when we're told that it's more than $5 billion, we think that we have to pay for the $5 billion in all one go. They have their moratorium period, mm -hmm. and you start paying for this lock of, uh, block of uh, debt when you get to this year. And by that time, you will have uh, gotten rid of or much reduced the, uh, the first lot that you received. So it is uh, practicable. Uh, our debt, debt servicing can be done. Mm -hmm. It's only when we find ourselves uh, paying more then we need to run the country and, uh, and the care that, well, capital works, uh, we can borrow uh, for. Uh, if we find that we're borrowing to run the government, uh, then we need to relook at our debt levels. So, um, okay, that, that uh, is in relation to foreign um, aid mm -hmm. and, and debt levels that we uh, receive. Debt mostly, aid is not paid. Right, so foreign debt. Um, what would you say about the uh, level of Chinese investment in Fiji, private investment? Uh, it is a, a welcome show, but how much of it will uh, be uh, reflected in uh, national income? Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay to have a big building going up right next to our office. But how much of that will be reflected in uh, income generation for the nation? Uh, right now, we do not see a very good indication because the workers there are not our workers. Uh, we don't even know what's going on behind the green wall, the green netting, whether they are uh, 
complying with our regulations, etc. So uh, we have to be very, very careful about those things. Let us not inherit a white elephant. Well, speaking of uh, buildings going up, you uh, made statements, you made comments rather, on how buildings shouldn't necessarily be taller than a palm tree. Yes, well, I say that. I said that because it was part of the tourism development policy. Tourism, when you are building uh, resorts, and you will notice that now. When you go out to resort areas, uh, ships coming in, uh, nothing is way above the palm trees. So it's not for uh, built up area development. You made a few contradictory uh, statements within that particular frame where you had said it shouldn't be taller than a palm tree. Uh, when asked to elaborate, you said 12 stories. Well, 12 story was the, uh, the reserve bank and it's behind the palm tree so you couldn't really see it coming in into the harbor. Okay. Well, what about development in the country in the future? You have also stated that you'd like to see it happen laterally instead of horizontally. You don't foresee that becoming a land issue later on? Uh, no, I think uh, as we grow and we, as we go, grow into uh, concentrated agro development where you don't need expansive uh, acreages, and you uh, maybe decrease the acreage, increase mechanization and uh, harvest. Uh, you don't need as much of a field to produce uh, the current crop or more. So, mm -hmm. looking but, at you know, land will always be an issue because uh, uh, we we cannot increase the uh, square uh, mileage of Fiji or the acreage. Absolutely. And looking at uh, the land issue as it is, right now the central division is heavily populated. That's where most of your voters obviously would be coming from. But even then, when it's so densely populated, you don't have space to move outwards. And the only r logical explanation would be to go upwards so that you can cater for all those that are coming in. Oh, encourage development of the other centers. And uh, we, a few uh, years ago, we had... Uh, uh, established uh, ports of entry in uh, Sabsawu and Lombasa and encouraged the ones in, uh, in the west, uh, Lotoka and uh, uh, in Ra. So those can still be developed as uh, entrepôt uh, and we have the, uh, the immediate environment, uh, the hinterland uh, catering for uh, the municipal development in those areas and spreading it out from the main centers of Lutoka. You don't think that that's going to become a land issue there it either? Will in be, the it will still be. Uh, but then we are comforted by the uh, findings of uh, the Maldusian, uh, who c the person who came up with the Maldusian checks. We can never be op overpopulated. There'll come a time when we'll have to slow down in accordance with our ability to produce our food and move. In real time, how do you see Sodelpa overcoming this? Should you be able to introduce uh, more development in the rural sectors? We uh, will just have to do it. Uh, it has been done. This land bank uh, concept is, uh, is not new. Uh, I spoke at a uh, pocket meeting in uh, Cunningham, and I told them this uh, land bank uh, concept is not new. Mm -hmm. I bought a piece of land here, and it was the land bank concept used by the Native Land Trust Board, where the Native landowners were uh, in discussion with the Native Land Trust Board and in discussion with the urban development and housing. And they all agreed, okay, we'll give you this block of land and the, uh, the tenant will have to pay 60 years of, of lease money. So while we're on the subject, uh, let's talk about Fiji First Party's management of uh, indigenous land. Would you like to comment on that? Do you think it's being managed in a sustainable manner? It's being managed by the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have not had time to adjust. Uh, it was managed by the, uh, the natives until the 2006 uh, change. Before all those changes came in, uh, native land was determined by native leaders and native consultations. So there was very little conflict. Uh, there were some internal differences which were sorted out internally. And when it came to the Council of Chiefs, when it went to the, uh, the Senate, people were prepared to handle the political side of uh, development uh, using native land. Uh, changing it very quickly from uh, one that was under the purview of Native Land Trust Board and Fijian Affairs Board 
uh, straight into government was a bit too sudden. Well, so this is, sorry. do you think that land is not secure? Uh, no, it's not, because uh, it's uh, determined by the simple majority in the House. And what would you change if you become Prime Minister? We would like to have that uh, safety measure uh, back in, and that is uh, the final say to come from uh, native land or the uh, Toke institutions. Does that uh, mean the, uh, the bringing back of the GCC? Uh, the GCC were only applicable because they appointed the uh, 14 members and one from Rotuma for the Senate. And they had the final say on the passage of, uh, of uh, bills that come up through the lower house at that time. Mm -hmm. with, one, uh, with one chamber, we have now have a unicameral parliament. We'll have to devise uh, something else where you will have consultation uh, compulsory consultation. The government will be forced to consult and include uh, native institutions in their discussions. Uh, can you give an example of, of uh, native institutions? So it's, uh, you don't seem like you, you're too willing to uh, bring back the GCC, but do you have plans for something of the equivalent? No, I want to bring back the GCC. The GCC is, a, is a established and governed by a regulation of the Itoke uh, affairs board. Uh, because of that, they are uh, an appendix to mm -hmm. the Itoke uh, Affairs Act. So we can bring back easily the regulation, uh, the Great Council of Chiefs of Muslim Turanga regulation, and establish that. And they will be a sounding board for the government. Mm -hmm. They've always been the calming, provi they've, come out, come out, they've uh, provided the calming uh, effect in all the uh, upheavals of the past. One of the uh, reasons for the removal of the GCC in, f in the first place was because of its politicization. Is there anything that you would do in terms of the legal framework for the GCC that would be different from the last time? No. I welcome their politicization. They have to be political. They have to interact with government fr on a political uh, platform. And the government will have to interact with them as a political uh, body. So there's nothing wrong with the Great Council seat being... Uh, being uh, being political. Okay, that's interesting. So let's move on to um, your education policies in terms of the, the loans that are given to students. Obviously that's a very popular uh, policy implemented by the Fiji First Government. Uh, what is Sodelpa's plan for tertiary education? We're going to provide scholarships and we'll take away the loan schemes. Uh, we will provide tertiary education according to the need of the nation. Does that mean that you will be introducing race-based scholarships again? Uh, we can. Uh, you can have a uh, Fijian Affairs uh, Board scholarship and also a multi-ethnic uh, scholarship. We've got to do it that way in order to uh, maintain a semblance of uh, parity in the development of education in the races. When you look at uh, the toppers, it's similar to the uh, Public Service Commission scholarships or the government scholarships of the, fa of the past. Uh, they are given out purely on merit. Mm -hmm. And when you looked at those that uh, benefited from those, they were mostly uh, children or students who had gone through uh, urban schools that have better facilities. The teachers have, a, have better facilities. They have uh, accessibility to the daily newspapers and the news. Now TV is almost universal. You can watch TV in almost any part of Fiji now. But at that time, uh, it was not the case. Uh, so people in the uh, main centers had better marks because of the better facilities uh, afforded to the schools and the students and the teachers. And, uh, the, and some of the good teachers couldn't go out because uh, they had to be close to their spouses who were posted locally uh, in the urban areas. And uh, they have better facilities. So. We have to look at the uh, education provision, accessibility to education, against the background of the needs of the labor market in Fiji. Yeah, so what, what would this look like? Uh, how many scholarships would be reserved for, let's say, the uh, s children of the Itoke community? Uh, how many for other ethnicities? It will be based on uh, ethnic uh, populations. And it will not be the number of scholarships. It will be based on uh, amount of money allocated for those. And it will be uh, 
uh, allocated also to the areas uh, required for our our human resource development needs. Are you saying in essence that it's going to be race and merit based? Yes. Uh, Even in the race, uh, in the allocation of the race, uh, race allocation, it will be m still merit based. And you don't think that you'll be marginalizing any ethnic group by doing that? Uh, no, they will, they will give, they will have uh, better opportunities in getting there. And uh, the multi-ethnic scholarship really welcome the multi-ethnic scholarships of our time uh, because of their numbers. There were very few of them. And when it came to the uh, facilities available to them, they were disadvantaged. Uh, and uh, before we can bring back uh, equality in our assessment based purely on merit, we have to make sure that the whole structure of education from kindergarten in the village or in, in the city uh, is the same until you get there. If you read the book uh, Guns, Germs and Steel, you'll realize that uh, uh, Jared Diamond, who wrote that book, was talking about there is no such truth, uh, no truth in, in assuming that a race is better mentally equipped than another race. Mm -hmm. It is the uh, opportunities afforded to them in their development. Okay, so that basically implies that you would do away with the uh, TELS scheme? We will, yes. And for all of those students that are currently under the scheme? They will continue on scholarship and will write away that the right of their debts. So they will not be able... Uh, they will not have to pay. They, they, they'll be bonded by service bond. Thank you for that. Mr. Rambuka, it's generally accepted that Sodelpa is the main rival of uh, Fiji First heading into this election. In your opinion, what makes you a better Prime Minister than Mr. Beni Marama? I, I, can't, I can't say a better Prime Minister than uh, Ben Marama. I can say that I have a, a better team than he has uh, because we will, have, uh, we will allow differences in opinions. Uh, and he doesn't have to bear the grudge of the population on his own. Uh, if he was uh, seen to be more consultative in his own cabinet and in his own caucus. We are like that naturally. Well, I'm not like that naturally. I consult and I, I debate with my own people. And uh, so I don't bear the grudge of the people alone. Well, well before we uh, look at uh, possibilities of working together, you don't seem to think that the uh, comparison that some might draw, that you're both military, you have a military background, and that uh, assuming power was done not necessarily with the consent of the people with coups, you don't think that people would say that you're pretty much on the same page? Well, uh, Churchill was a military man, and Hitler is a military man, and uh, Eisenhower was a military man. So all military men on different sides of the, of the war. And in our case, in a political uh, a struggle, we, we're both military men. We, we give credit to our military background and uh, the associations we made during our, our times and, uh, in the military, but we differ. We, we are two different persons, and our outlook on life and our systems and methods differ. Well, looking at your differences, would you be willing to put them aside if push came to shove, you would have to form a coalition. Would you be open to a coalition with Fiji First? I can, I can work with him. I can work with him. I've worked with him in the past, uh, but then it would probably be unfair to him to, uh, to uh, have me as a junior partner of his party. Uh, I can have him as a junior partner of my, uh, my coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, uh, um, and because he'll, the, he'll be the junior partner in the coalition, he'll have to go with the majority in the coalition. So if you did form a coalition, you would be aiming to become prime minister? Yes. And do you he think he would, take, he, he would take likely to that? Uh, he can. Uh, I think he's, uh, he's above uh, the perception of the picture that people have drawn of him. Uh, well, Mr. Mbuka, a, a while back, um, I believe the prime minister called you a snake. And in, in reply to that, you said that it takes a snake to know a snake, something along those lines. Yeah. Could you explain that? Well, you know, I, I uh, retorted. And, uh, but when I looked at it, I said, well, I welcome the, uh, the comment. I welcome the, uh, the uh, making me uh, look uh, or calling me a snake. 
the Bible says that be as wise as a snake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, looking at uh, talks of coalition, bringing it back, um, you have already stated that there were talks being carried out between Sodalpa and NFP, but uh, Mr. Beeman Prasad, the leader of NFP, has stated that it was not talks of coalition, but of a partnership. No, the there were talks of coalition first. Mm -hmm. There were talks of coalition initially, and then they found out that uh, their uh, members uh, would not uh, go along with the coalition option. So they said, no, we cannot uh, talk coalition. We would like to field our own uh, candidates, but we will cooperate. And said, okay. So we cooperated. Did you meet with Mr. Prasad at any time to discuss? Uh, In the initial stages, yes. I met with all the party leaders, Mr. Prasad, uh, Prime Minister Chaudhary. Uh, we didn't, I, I didn't have any meetings with uh, uh, Tupo. Mm -hmm. uh, she was working with the party in 2013-14, uh, uh, that was before I came in. But the other party, yes, uh, uh, Jag, uh, we had worked with, uh, spoken with him in the initial stages of mm -hmm. our talks. Well, it before we get to uh, Ms. Ndarnindalo and the similarities or maybe the differences that were there between uh, NFP and Sodalpa and the reason for her leaving, uh, you said that you met with all the party leaders. Does that also include uh, the FFP party leader? FFP, who's that? Fiji First. Oh, no, we didn't. Because we were talking about a, an opposition coalition. Okay. Yeah. Opposition. Well, looking at Ms. Ndarnidalo, she's made a few statements uh, about you. She has said word for word, I don't know who Rambuka is, neither does half the country. Those who do know him for only one thing, Kuman, Rekha of Fiji. Now, she blames you for the poor economic performance of the country post-1999 and the collapse of the NBF, saying that you're setting a bad example for military officers. What do you say to that? Uh... She's welcome to her views. Uh, um, I don't know how many military officers uh, she knows or she has uh, uh, come across working together or working against in the past and how many of them reflect uh, who I was and how many of them reflect who I am now. But this, uh, I have to say, this seems to be more than just some political rivalry. Ms. Tronindalo, with what she's been saying in the media, she seems to resent you. What have you done that would make her say such things? Well, she is uh, the uh, daughter of uh, the late uh, Andy Queen in Bavandra, mm -hmm. uh, the widow and then, uh, well, the late wife of uh, Dr. Bavandra. And maybe she is still pretty hurt about uh, what happened to Dr. Bavandra in 1987. And the fact that he died uh, fairly soon after that, uh, she probably blames me for the uh, mental pressure and the psychological effect of being ousted by the military in 87. Well, the late Andy Queenie has uh, publicly in the past stated that she does forgive you. Do you think that you would be making any other statements in relation to this, maybe making an apology to uh, to Paul? I can do that. I can do that. Uh, we uh, we're related. Uh, through our uh, Bau connections. I'm way, way down the uh, social scale in Bau, but uh, we come from uh, uh, a, uh, an area of Bau. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll bring it back to the uh, political differences. Was there something that you'd like to share with us or on for the record about what may have been the final straw, the straw that broke the camel's back, that led to Ms. Darindalo leaving NFP, because she has stated the, the reason that she left NFP was because NFP was having talks with Sodelpa, and by that she didn't agree with the fact that they were meeting Sodelpa and you. Well, that probably uh, should be dealt with between her and the rest of NFP. Uh, because that had nothing to do with, uh, with me and her. Mm -hmm. uh, she didn't want her former party to come and work with me. So, I, mean, I guess we are asking this is because the NFP has been uh, hesitant to say outright that they have been um, talking with Sadalpa. Yeah. But uh, I think it's safe to say from your replies that you, if, if it really does come down to it, you would be willing to work with the Hope Party headed by uh, Madam Dronindalo. We can work with them, yes. Uh, we can work with them, we can work with, uh, uh, with Unity. Mm -hmm. uh, I can work with anyone, uh, including Fiji First, if they're willing to come and, uh, and negotiate and work mm -hmm. together for Fiji.
And it would be a, a very interesting negotiation because uh, different parties have various uh, agendas, various things that they would like to do. So in terms of the give and take, if it does come down to a negotiation, what are some of the things that you're willing to give or rather compromise on? Uh, that will have to be decided at the table and it will not be a personal choice. It will be the party and the management board that will be involved. Uh, on the National Federation Party, they're still being uh, affected or they're still hurting from uh, our attempted uh, coalition in 1999. Mm -hmm. And they suffered very badly. And I, in fact, I blamed myself for the, uh, for the exit of such great leaders as Harish Sharma and James Rahman and uh, Jairam Reddy from the political scene in Fiji for trying to uh, work with me and the whole Indo Fijian population rejected them for trying to work with me and I, mm. I uh, every time we meet I tell them look I'm sorry I, I caused your early exit from uh, national leadership. And do you think that heading into this election that's the reason why NFP is so uh, hesitant to openly articulate this? I think the NFP leaders uh, can, can work. It's the uh, NFP members who have not seen what NFP have seen uh, like the uh, Itoke members in the rural areas, they uh, would still want to see Rumbuk of 87. Uh, mm -hmm. Although there was no talk with anybody before Rumbuk of 87 emerged, everybody's right. claiming, yeah, he did that for us. Right. I didn't ask anyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, for the National Federation Party leaders to be cautious at this time, I don't blame them at all. And I respect their views. I respect their decision. Uh, to not talk coalition until after the election. Well, but you must understand, uh, even for the racial tensions that were incited in 1999, you're being put forward as the main instigator of those things. But of course, you weren't alone um, in your endeavors. I mean, you didn't operate autonomously or rather independently. In 99? Uh, which one? Before the election? Yes. Well, I before the election, we had... Uh, uh, talked about working together and then we had that uh, discussion in Naviti where we, come up, we came up with a platform mm -hmm. of cooperation and we signed a uh, Naviti Accord uh, which allowed us to uh, go in together and uh, at that time the Fiji Labour Party broke away and used the, uh, uh, the phrase of working with the enemy against the Federation Party mm -hmm. and use the same for uh, to attract the uh, the Indo-Fijians or the uh, Itoke in the Labour Party also used that against me. Uh, now he's betrayed us. Uh, he's uh, going to work with, uh, with the Federation Party so let's not support him, let's break and that's when they form the new the other parties. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, that's something that maybe Mr. Prasad is scared of that would happen to him? I think not scared of, but being realistic about it because still that, uh, that pool, political pool in the masses that will probably uh, not give him the votes he needs to be a formidable... Uh, so uh, pretty much just playing it safe? Yeah. Uh, he, it's safer for him not to be working with me, politically safer. Thank you for that, Mr. Rambuka.